Chinese history for the past 30 years has been a story of economic growth. There's never really been an economic revolution quite like China's. You know, the most populous country in the world also enjoying the most rapid economic growth in history. An industrial revolution is far more rapid than in Britain or America, for example. We've never seen so many people come out of poverty so quickly. We've never seen so many people go from the rural countryside into the cities so quickly. What it took Europe 150 years to do in the Industrial Revolution, China has done in 30 years. In 1979, Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping called on the country to combine socialist ideology with elements of a pragmatic market economy under the banner of socialism with Chinese characteristics, reportedly telling the Chinese people to get rich is glorious. After Mao died and Deng Xiaoping rose to power, that was one of the great events, I think, of the 20th century. What he did was, if you will, decommunize or decentralize much of the economy of China. There's some economists who think that this year, China's going to contribute more real GDP growth to the global economy than the US, Europe, and Japan combined. We can think of China as a one big factory, and this factory has to keep churning in order to keep up the economic growth. There's still a lot of unlocked resources or idle resources. But in recent years, growth has begun to slow. The double-digit GDP growth that we saw in the 1990s and the early 2000s was an exceptional era. It will never be repeated again because that was this extraordinary export-led economy matched by a demographic dividend of very low young age, moving up to a middle-aged working population. Annual growth rates some um, 10 years ago, 9, 10, 11%, now about 6.5%. The question is, what's the reason for the slowdown compared with the earlier growth rates? I think it's just natural. Even though there is a headline growth slowdown, China's economy is still growing at a much bigger rate than it uh, has before in terms of real output, just because it's so much bigger now. It is a function of the need to rein in some of the economic development channels that were getting out of control. China has severe air pollution issues, environmental degradation that pervades almost every corner of the country. That's a function of unbridled economic development. Beijing now wants to shift away from manufacturing towards a service-oriented economy. It initially was focusing on manufacturing. It also focused on trying to bring in foreign companies who would use China's low-cost labor along the coastline and assemble things for export. But as this developed, and as they've realized there's a need to start transitioning their economy into something more sustainable, they realize they have to build up its services. And that is hard. You have to do it in a way that's sustainable, that creates as few social dislocations as possible, uh, while at the same time delivering for people on a certain level of economic growth to which they've been accustomed. What you see in their data is the service sector is growing rapidly, consumption's growing rapidly. That's great. You know, I was just in China. Young people are out in restaurants and cafes, and they're buying cars. Chinese consumption as a portion of China's GDP has certainly grown, and that transition is happening. But interestingly, the roads are still being built. The high-speed rails are still being built, and this investment-led system is, is kind of still moving on. Not at the same pace as it was, say, 10 years ago, but I would argue it hasn't slowed enough to bolster the meaningful transition to a consumer-based economy.